Bricks Builder Beta 1.8 has now brought out the Mega Menu or the Menu Builder, especially for the mobile. And there's a lot you can do with it and you have a lot of control, but there are also a few things you've got to bear in mind. So we're going to go through it step by step. Brand new page with a section and a container stretched across. I'm going to type in Nest or you could type in Nav as well. We're after the nav nestable. Now I'm gonna minimize a lot of what we see here at the moment, just so we can go through it stage by stage. When we drop that in, we have the basically the widget nav nestable, and then inside of there we have a block that's gonna contain what you now see above here. We also have a toggle open that you will see on the mobile, and we will come to that when we start to address the mobile. But for now, let's just work on the desktop. If I now expand on the nav items, we're gonna get two text links, which have been named as a nav link. Uh, very simple, they can go to any internal external page. You could even open up an image if you wanted to. Then we have the drop down, and then we have the toggle close mobile over here. Now for anyone that's used to building menus or have worked with mega menus elsewhere, this is quite a new thing for us to kind of get used to. Normally they're embedded within the widget and it might be a setting that you're gonna modify the size and the positioning. Now you kind of have to do it individually here. Once you get used to it, it's okay, but just bear this in mind and I'm gonna show you how to get the best out of it. If we now go over to the drop down and I click this, you'll now see options down here for mega menu and multi-level. Right now we just have a drop down. The mega menu is where you can now have another container appear with lots of other items, video, images, text links, anything you want. The multi-level is basically like, imagine if you were to hover over drop-down link two, and then you had another level appear. So it's not a drop-down within a drop-down. Well, well, it is in a way, but it's where you now have multi-level. So you might go like this in a way. Now I'm gonna expand on that, because what you have within the drop-down is a div that contains two links. And remember, if, if you're getting confused, nav link and link are both the same thing, right? It's just a link. If you go and look at it in Elements, they've just been renamed differently. They do exactly the same thing. The beauty about building like this is that you have really lots of control. I mean, right now we have a drop down link one and a drop down link two. Could quite easily go and drop in an image like that. And when you view that on the preview, you can see what it's doing when I hover down. We now have a link, a link, and we got an image. So it's almost behaving like a mega menu, if I'm honest. I mean, look, I'm just hovering over it. But that's where you just want an individual one, you know, maybe at some part of your navigation menu. Now, before we really go in depth into the drop down in terms of the mega menu and the multi level, I just want to show you that the nav nestable has some extra features that are new within Bricks. The first thing you're gonna see though is the mobile menu. Again, let's ignore that until we come back to that. We're actually gonna go down here to the nav item top level. We can tell it the gap. So if I was to go and change that to be 100, you can see what it's doing there. We'll put it back to 30. We can apply some padding and you can do it individually, unlink or link. And of course, if you wanna have a different color or typography activated for the active item, you can do that. Make things a little clearer. I'm just gonna add in a pre-select style or a class style that I've already created. And the reason I've done that is because I wanna show you what happens the moment you now go and add in a pretty big font. Can you see here now, drop down link is basically not big enough. There's two ways you could sort this out. You could either go to the drop down, go to your layout and your sizing, and let's just do it in the width and make it be 300. But now if you've got many items, next door they're all going to be spaced out as well so let me just show you i made the drop down be 300 it pushes the about all the way across so you're better off just going to the content and then you go to the min width and do it it's a little bit confusing i have to be honest because if i pop it in here it doesn't do anything if i pop it in here well it kind of wraps even more so I'm just letting you know that if you're trying to experiment a little bit, let me just show you how that looks on the preview. Everything is still spaced out equally, but now even though it wraps under it, it kind of sits okay. So just bear that in mind. Back to the nav nestable widget, we then have inside the content tab a drop down as well. So if I just click that, we have items. Now, what's kind of good about this is that is whatever settings you do here will apply to every time you add a drop down so let me just show you okay i'm going to make a duplicate of this drop down so we have another one i'm going to go into this second drop down i'm going to give it a background yellow color there i'm not going to worry about margins or paddings okay back in the nav nestable 
Let's go back over to the drop down, and now I'm going to go over to the content, and I'm going to say make the content color be a green color like that. So if I was to now save that, and we just preview, and we go here, we get a green color. I go here, we get a green color, even though I have different colors here. So you can apply it uh, to synchronize across all of them. Clear out that color, and I'm just going to get rid of this extra drop down that we added. Now let's go and have a look at the mobile, and this is where you're gonna have to think a little bit about your layout. If I switch over here, you just get these bars at the top here, toggle bar. And if I enable the setting for keep open while styling, this is how it's gonna look. We're very much used to when we open a menu, usually you'll have a cross or an X somewhere to close it. The X is here now. So if you were looking at this on a mobile, you would have hit that, and it would have opened to be positioned over here. And then you would hit it again to close. I don't like that. So I wanna, I'm going to go about and I'm going to change it. First thing I'm going to do is reposition where all of this is at the moment. I don't want it to be in the middle. So I'm going to go to the nav nestable and I'm going to say justify the content to be at the top. I don't mind it being, in fact, no, I'm going to have it on the left like that. Now, if you don't like it being positioned too close to the left, you might go and do something like this. But here's a little mistake you're going to make. That is now bringing over the open mobile one, which you don't want. Again, you've got to get your head around this. So I'm going to go back to my nav nestable item, and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get rid of that like that. Instead, what I'm going to do is go to the actual nav items, go to style, go to layout, and now I'll do my 50 from the left and my 50 from the top. So again, remember, if you go to the nav nestable and you do it there, because it says, well, look, you can position it. Look, again, let me show you. You're bringing the on, the open bit back into play. You don't want that, okay? So instead, do it on the block that contains uh, all of the items that sit inside. So now when you open it, it's going to open there, not in the middle. Okay, that's a little bit better, but I really don't like the close button being there. Now you could, if you want, just go to style, go to positioning, and then go and do like an absolute or a fixed and rearrange it like that. The better way to do it, I would say, is I'm going to grab a block and I'm going to stick it over here. So it's kind of, actually, no, it's going in the wrong place. Stick it at the top. I'm then going to take my toggle close into that block like that. So there it is. I'm then going to go to my block. I'm going to say align it to be on the right hand side like that. I'm going to stylize it just a little bit. And in fact, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm also going to say give me about 30 from the bottom. Go back to my nav item and I'm now going to reduce this to be about 20 like that. So the nav item where I did 50-50 before, I've now repositioned it. I still don't like the bar, but don't worry. If I go to the toggle close mobile, okay, and this is where you've got to get used to it. At the moment, that's what it brings over. I'm going to hit the icon. I'm going to go for icon, ion icons. I'm going to type in cross, or not cross, sorry, close. And I'm now going to pick, say, uh, I could pick any one of these, to be honest. I could go for a big one. That's not actually that big at all, is it? We'll just go for that one for now. I'm going to size it to be, uh, let's go with 30 pixels. I'm going to make the color be a bit of a ready color like that. I'm now going to remove the mobile menu from being viewed. I'm going to go down to where we now have our toggle open mobile. I'm just going to reposition that with a bit of padding. Obviously, you would do it based in, you know, it's going to be sat inside a container or something. You would do it in a more methodical way, as you would do with any widget. So on a mobile view, if I open this, we now have our menu. Obviously, we got our drop down as well appearing there. But now we have a different close button positioned in a much better space for when you want to close it. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think that makes, I don't know, familiar or familiar arority, you know the word, works a little bit better, right? So that is a little bit of a nuance with how you're going to create it. There's a little bit of extra work required. I would like to think going forward that Bricks might kind of position things a little bit differently. Because if you don't think like this, a little bit out the box, you might kind of go, well, okay, it's down there. I might as well just accept it. Your client might not like that. Let's now go and mess around a little bit with the drop down. So we have a standard drop down. Okay, if I click it, we go over here. That is all we're doing. It even just says the word drop down. 
change the icon. So if I was to go over here now, pick an arrow pointing down instead, you're gonna see that appear. You can change the size. I could position it to be on the left instead, which makes no sense whatsoever. We'll just hit the cross because it's always gonna be on the right as default and change the color as well. You have the option to add a claret as well. Let me just show you what that is. If I just go and do a 10, you can't really see, you can just about see it over there. If I go and put in a bit of a color on it, and if I hit transform and just go to where we have rotate X and put in 180, you now have a, well, you can see it there. You now got a claret appear. Um, imagine the entirety of this was that color there. And now you've got that appearing after you've spaced things out below accordingly. It's a nice little feature, which isn't a bad thing really. Now staying in the drop down, when you get to the content, you'll notice it, it says toggle on hover. If I was to change that to be a click, the items won't appear until you actually click. So again, it's pretty self-explanatory. One of the big drivers for this coming out in the first place was the mega menu, but we also have the multi-level. I want to address that and then we'll go to the mega menu, not because I'm keeping you waiting, but because the mega menu, there's a lot more you can do with it. So let's just go and enable that now. If we now view the page after that's enabled, this is what happens. You get this animation. It's not now just dropping down, it comes inwards. But I'm sure at this point you're saying, well, was that it? It's not really a multi-level, it's just a bit of animation. What we're gonna do though is now duplicate uh, this entire drop down, duplicate it, and we're gonna drop this into the first drop down. So let's just pick it up. And we'll go, we'll go over here underneath the uh, the links there. So when I click now, you have another drop down, and that appears. Now the trouble is though, is that what if I want to go back? Well, look, even if I click over here, I keep seeing the very final level. So imagine you've got five multi levels going on. You're you're a little bit stuck. You can get around that by hitting in a back button. So over here, if we go to our parent drop down, in a way. We're gonna add in a bit of text. We're gonna say, uh, go back. I'm gonna give it a background color of yellow. I mean, I'm gonna remove what I already did with the second drop down. I'm gonna duplicate the new one because now I've gone and done the go back bit. And again, I'm gonna stick it in just underneath there. So you can basically see what we've got. We've got the drop down. You then got your div there and we got link link and then we got another drop down. Both drop downs contain the go back with a yellow uh, background color. And then when you preview it, this should give you the back button. Actually, it won't. It won't do that. And this is where, again, you kind of have to get your head around things. What I did here was I went and put in, you can see it here, I've enabled uh, the multi-level, obviously, and then we've said go back, yellow background, etc. And then I applied it to the second one as well. But because there, is no, there isn't a further drop down or a load of items appearing after this, you need to actually disable it. You only enable it for the parent. So if you had three levels of multi-level, you would enable it for level one, which would be the parent drop-down, and then level two. Sorry, here you go, parent drop-down, and then for level two, but not for level three. We only have two levels here. So activate it for level one, but not for level two. Okay, Comple you know, look, completely get rid of everything you have here. Get rid of it. So now when you view it, you can still go down because it's activated, but now to go back. Don't assume that you have to put this on the next level down. Only if you know if there was going to be another drop down here, then you would activate it. Again, you've got to play with it and get, and then you'll understand it better. Let's go back to our drop down and let's just completely get rid of all of that. Okay, let's disable it. So now we're just back to the standard drop down. Now let's very quickly look at the mega menu. And when we enable it, you should see a bit of a flash and now it's kind of moved all the way across and now it the items in there aren't going to be directly below the trigger button or label now they stretch across here okay i've just given this a yellow background styling as well and you can do whatever you want in that's kind of the beauty about the mega menu if i click on the content and just go and drop in a container like that so it sits within I'm just going to move it over to be to the top and I'm going to move the links to be sat into the container there. I could duplicate this container a few, let me just do it twice there. Go to the content, set it up to be a row and then you're in the world of Flexbox containers or maybe you're going to go and switch it over to be a grid instead. I could add in some rich text, I could drop in a button, I can drop in some images. What happens when you hover over it is this is what you get. 
And you could do a container within a container. You could put in a, you could even do a contact form into here if you so wanted. You know, you hover over and it's sat down here with a subscribe button, social sharing icon. You could be very, very inventive. The downside comes when you eventually get onto the mobile. Now, I know I've not spent a huge amount of time here because building this out would depend on what you're showing in terms of content. And I'm going to leave that up to your imagination. We open it, we've got our crossover there still, we've got our items. By the way, um, when you go to the desktop, when you hover, you'll get it. But on the mobile, the hover effect isn't there. But if I now open it, super, super duper ugly, right? But that's kind of the payoff you're always going to get, in my opinion, whenever you do a mega menu. What you got to do is go back over to your page, make sure you've said keep open the styling. You then got to click on it and then work your way methodically down all of your items. So you might say, okay, for the drop down, the content within the drop down, we're instead going to go for a vertical look like that. Then you might change your style for your typography class name as well. So on the desktop, you can have whatever style of look you want to go for. You get to the mobile, you might have a different look. At the same time, you might want to hide certain items that don't need to be visible on the mobile. Remember, the busier you make your mega menu, the more busy it's going to look. And do you really want the menu to go to a point where they now have to scroll up and down to see all the items? Keep it really, really simple. Overall, this is a neat start to Bricks Builder, having a menu builder. It still needs refining in terms of layout and how after a bit of thinking out the box and problem solving, you can find solutions as how to showcase items on your page. But for a new user, it might prove a little bit difficult. I hope this video helps you out. I would love to see how this starts to evolve. I hope they tinker with the mobile side of things, especially with the toggle items. Like I had to go and stick it in a block and move it just to go and get that cross in the top right. I would like it to kind of be built into the box. Hey, I know some of you are going to say, well, so what? You had to do a little bit of effort. But I'm thinking about all different types of users, new and veteran. Hey, I'm Imran Webb squadron i hope you like subscribe share and follow i'll see you soon never break always fight never quit do it right play the game win your life have no shame there's no time feel the pain let the grind i could change in my mind pick a lane commit and climb the only way to win in life i never miss that fact taking big swings bitch hand me the bat put me in the ring you'll go out in a bag